Hello everyone and welcome back to a brand new episode of Attack On Show. I'm Robbie. And I'm Jay Marsh. We've got a great episode for you lined up. Do we really though? Do we ever come, not come through? We always come through. Yes, we yeah. do. I'm Preview Review. That's right, your favorite segment is back. We're going to take a look at the horror film Relic. Relic. 2020s. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm excited for this I, one. I can't, I've literally been waiting for like four minutes. When are we going to get back to the theaters? I don't know. Uh, and then I'm uh, Extreme It. Da -da! Da -da! Extreme it. It's been a long time. Yeah, it is. Yes. This, we're going to take a look at Netflix's Extraction. Uh, if you haven't seen it already, oh, we'll let you know whether or not you should. No spoilers. Okay, all right. And then I'm Binge Worthy. We're going to take a look at Disney Plus's Galleries. The yeah. title of the series tells it off. It you don't know what does. it's about. Yeah. Uh, it'll, it's total spoiler alert there. And then I miss my MTV. Jeff's making the pick. What is the chances of that? Sorry. That part I'm of the not, deal. It's okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what do we got, Jeff? Oh, we have... Uh, um, oh, God damn it. This is why you can't make the picks, Jeff. What is it? Hoochmooch. Hoochmooch. I did it. I don't want to smoke that. Oh. No, what's it called? Hoochmooch? Hoochmooch. What's the song? Um, I don't know. He must, it sounds good. He got me sold. <laughs> Everybody, as always, I'm Robbie. And I'm Jay Marsh. And this is Attack on Show. All right, we're back. We are. And there's not many movies coming out. Everything is just going straight to streaming. But, God, we love preview reviews we so do. much. God, we miss it so much. We have to find something to do. Oh. Uh, so... We're going to take a look. This looks like a fantastic horror film. They may never make it to a theater, let's be honest. Uh, who knows? Yeah, right. Everybody, this is Preview Review Relic. Relic. What's with that mu music? Like, it's on everything, Rob. When was the last time you spoke to her? It's been a few weeks. <laughs> IFC means I f***ing care. Yeah. <laughs> Gran? Mom? Fucking boomers lost in the woods. God damn it. She was scared. She thought someone was coming into the house. T? Not with those hands. God, no. God, <laughs> yeah. Do you know where you were, Mum? I suppose I went out. What's this? I was on the property when your grandfather inherited it. His mind wasn't there. Oh, anymore. I've seen that before. There's a Necronomicon in the basement. <laughs> oh, Don't read it. No, mm. no. She can't live on her own anymore. She has to be watched. Everything all right, Grant? I thought this was where it got in. Who? Whoever was coming into the house. This family seems very sympathetic to anyone with dementia. <laughs> Mum, what is it? It's here. Under the bed. There's nothing under the bed, Mum. Will you check for me? It's Howie Mandel! <laughs> Dutch oven. Falls for it every time. <laughs> I'm here to help you, Mum. I can see you. By bloody disgusting. <laughs> the Daily Dead? <laughs> this house seems unfamiliar. Well, there you have it. This show seems unfamiliar. <laughs> to a lot of people. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so there's Relic, the horror film coming out in 2020. No official release date, so stay tuned because we will definitely be bringing you the updates of and this And frankly, 8.8 thousand views. Hey, The Daily Dead Yeah. says it looks good, yeah, so, so who knew? Got that going for you. <laughs> you, you know. I don't have anything else to say about that I'm one. I'm done. No, yeah. you ready for <laughs> Extreme It? <laughs> On this week's episode of Extreme It, 
Extraction. We're taking a look at the Netflix original movie, Extraction. Yes. Starring Thor himself, Chris Hemsworth. It, it, wait, wait, wait. This is not the same Thor universe? No, uh, it is produced by the Russo brothers, okay, though. Okay, then how can you get hit by that many cars and not be a god? The man's a badass. Wow. Have you seen his workouts on YouTube? No, it's true. You're Insane. right. You're, no, Insane. no, it's absolutely not. Uh, Extraction, if you've not watched by now, uh, the title's pretty... Uh, Self-explanatory. It, it's actually um, He's yeah. basically a mercenary hired to go and free yeah, somebody who's been captured, ago. and then he's basically trapped in a whole city and has to get this kid yes. out of the city that everybody's just hunting yeah. down. Um, this movie, I, I will say, I got to tell you, we, we've talked before about Netflix original yeah. movies, and I've yes. said they've, they've been more like these straight-to-video type sure, films. Absolutely. Um, this one, it's I would have paid money to see in absolutely. a theater probably two or three times. It's, it is that film, is it not? Yes. The, wow. the action sequences are, are they just they blow you away. Uh, I mean, Chris Hemsworth, th this definitely solidifies him. I mean, you, got, it, you really have, and when you look at it this way, you got the Russo brothers doing this, you got Chris Hemsworth, and really, I don't want to say nobody else because there's incredible acting in this, but no one, I mean, there's no one else that you would recognize a name for. Uh, no. Um, no, you got, uh, was it Hopper from uh, Stranger Things in it? Oh, my God. Wow. <laughs> yeah, no. Uh, but, okay, you're you know, right. Uh, let me get his name because I feel bad. Yes. David Harbour. Okay, um, yes. He, he, he does, he's got a small role in it that's sure. really good. I will say Sam Hargrave is the director of this. Now, the one thing I really wanted to point out to this is Sam Hargrave is known as, like, a stuntman in Hollywood. Like, he... Okay. Um, which, what other great action film is out there that a stuntman started John Wick? Um, and I will say Extraction is in that realm uh, as is, far yes. as... Like, when it comes to, when it comes to gunplay, yes. it's very legitimate. You can tell that, I mean, we, we know and you guys have taken a look and seen that, um, that Keanu Reeves has done a lot of training. You can definitely see that the same thing applies yes. to this movie. Proper yes. gun control. The fighting in this is just oh. insane. Um, you know, there, it's just... Obviously, some of it is unrealistic, but the style that they apply to this, with using the the surrounding elements, the sets around them, and, and you know, like the kicking and the head hitting off the bricks. There's just a, so many there cool is a action. One run through one of these scenes, and I literally sat there like, "Oh my god, this is never going to end." Yes, like, they, the, the the camera work through hallways, and it just kept going, it kept going, it kept going, and there was no cuts. Incredible, some of these scenes. Uh, it's yeah. It's it's mimicked as a one take. Now obviously there are multiple takes, but they find a way to blend the camera in this car sure. chase sequence. That's <laughs> The camera work, the cinematography, the, the way that they filmed this action sequence blew me away. I was giggling like a like a high school was, quarterback on prom night. Like, like I, it, no, it was exact. <laughs> I was it was just watching it. It just it didn't oh. end. And I and you and you do get lost in the idea. Like you miss the first five minutes that it hasn't cut yet, and then you Thank start you. to realize it hasn't cut because yes. the camera works going in the car, out of the car, back in the car, and, and it's, it's spinning around. This is one of those films where I literally sat there and was. I found myself holding my breath in scenes because it's just that intense action packed and intense. Yeah, uh, it's 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 from start to finish, and it's not even cheesy start it really to is. to finish. It um, really is. You know, the, Chris Hemsworth character, it's Tyler Rake. He obviously is conflicted, has had a bad past, but they do even a good job of not overdoing that, of like no. waking up and opening the whiskey bar and drinking like every conflicted hero does. Um, they, they they made that even interesting enough to try that you want to learn more about his character. It might be the dreamy eyes, I don't know, but he it's is... It's definitely the dreamy eyes, yes. but go ahead. But the, the character is interesting enough, and yes. they don't really reveal a lot, so you do want to find out more about him. But this movie, it starts, and you're trapped in it mm -hmm. till the very end. I mean, I till the very end, like till the last minute of this movie, it's it's just heart pounding, edge of your seat. I liked about this movie is that when you get tied into action films that are this action packed, there's always a oh, of course there's a hatch at the bottom of a tank. And Walking Dead reference. Did no, <laughs> did not yes. happen. And it did not happen in this. And I found myself. It's a really great reference, Rob. I found myself almost looking for this, and there wasn't. No, it, it was well it plotted was a, out. The the car chase scenes, the action fight scenes, and, and it's a good story. It's about the idea of where. You know, Chris Hemsworth is a is a as a mercenary, not supposed to care about this kid who he's rescuing. Obviously, does doesn't just want to hand him over because he's worried about him. And some of the characters in this that you believe are just 
bad guys, they actually do dive into them a little bit more where they, they end up, there's more to the character. So I did like the character development watching this movie for all the characters, not just his. And I almost felt like there were some spots where they were setting someone up to be like an I don't care character. Mm -hmm. And then they kind of pulled through, which I always find that is an interesting take in film. Like they set this person up to be like, oh, this person's going to flip. This person's going to be a jerk. And they're like, no, at the end, they actually kind of pulled through. Yes. Yeah. yeah. No, this is a very well done film. So I do have to eat my own shoe or eat crow or however the phrase may be. When I say Netflix movies don't hold up to real blockbuster yes, Hollywood films, this movie should have gone to theaters. I, I'm not, I'm, I absolutely, I'm actually surprised that no. it did. And they've already announced a sequel. Yes, we're past the spoiler alert. So if you haven't watched it right now, too bad that he just yeah. said that. But uh, they did announce a sequel. Although they have not confirmed Chris Hemsworth, they did announce the director True. is confirmed. They're still going to work on the script. It's very early pre-production on that. But yes. Um, but yes, there is a sequel planned. I don't see how they can do it without I Chris mean, Hemsworth. Really, and then I'm going to slightly pull back a little here. Would you say it's the best film in this, this genre that you've seen on Netflix? I Netflix, yes. Yes. John Wick still. Netflix, it would no, be. No, 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 no. No, but I'm saying as a as a Netflix. Oh, it's the best Netflix home. movie, hands down. Okay. Uh, hands and down. I have to agree with you, so it's a definite. But go. crossing over, I will say, of all action film, John Wick's my like pedestal. Absolutely. Like, Extraction's right there. I, like, I agree. I, I would I, love absolutely. a crossover. Can we get these two together? Oh, ooh, yes. How ooh, wicked. Wow. Let's bring El Mariachi in, Antonio Banderas, oh, and this is. The, I, there we go. Money, money, money. So yes, so definitely, I will say. Definitely check out Netflix Distraction. Mm -hmm. What do you say? Oh, absolutely. Come yeah. on. Yeah. yeah, it's a given. So if you haven't watched by now, you got Netflix. You already paid the nine ninety. Is it nine ninety nine? T Mobile pays it for me. Yeah, I know. Uh, if you already have Netflix subscription, definitely check the movie out. You won't be disappointed. If you are disappointed, leave comments below because I want to know why. Yeah, I would love to have a conversation with you. And while you're down there leaving comments, make sure to share. I mean, not only yes, absolutely sure. Tell everyone about us, but make sure to click like. And subscribe. Yeah, but we're not done yet. We're not done yet. We're not done, but I'm going to throw that in the middle for yeah. a change. It doesn't hurt to say it once in a while. Yeah. Yeah, no one does it, so might as well say it. Anyway, what do you want to do now? Is it time for Binge Worthy? Yeah, binge Worthy! Listen up now. This is serious. I'm just wondering, uh... Did you... No! All right, on this week's episode of Binge Worthy, we're taking a look at Disney Plus's gallery. I mean, if that doesn't entice you alone... Uh, if you look really close into the fine print. I would actually argue that this, I mean, like most of us, we've probably already canceled our Disney membership because we've gone through all the Marvel stuff. We've gone through all the Star Wars stuff. However, this is an incredible opportunity to watch some really cool stuff. Yes. So at Disney Gallery, when you zoom in really close on the itty bitty thumbnail on your TV screen, you'll notice it says Star Wars Mandalorian. A lot of people have moved past this. Uh, the thumbnail art on Disney Plus, awful. Uh, I think really nobody is. nobody You're knows what that. this God, is. No, absolutely. Um, it's actually a behind the scenes, in depth look at the making of the Mandalorian series, which best Star Wars TV series. Oh my God! Out. Really, number I would, two next yes. to Clone Wars, but best Disney mm. Plus original content. I will say best live um, action. Yes, best live action, even over Ewoks. Oh God! Wow. Yeah, uh, but. They, no. <laughs> no. No. <laughs> it's a fetish for me. I don't know what you want. So if you've breezed over this, and I will say part of the fault of this, uh, I, when, when Disney released this gallery series, they released like two other series. Okay. And one of them was like Disney scenes, which was like quick five minute montages of like different scenes from like other Disney animated movies that just blended in. So this was kind of like flown in under the radar. Um, I'm a huge Star Wars fan, obviously. Uh, and even bigger Dave Filoni fans. So I was really excited for this to come out. Are you going to show me a tattoo? Uh, no, no, later. Maybe another tight. time. Another these time. Yes, I'm yeah. sweating. Uh, so uh, I was really excited for the series. And when you watch the series, so I love the idea of uh, this gallery. Is they're, they're breaking apart each episode yeah. where like episode one is just the directors. And what it is is every episode is John Favreau and Dave Filoni. Two great, um, just two people you would just sit and love to listen to. Oh, amazing. Yeah, that's yes. important. Yeah. I could just listen to them for sure. an hour at a Absolutely. time. Absolutely. And then it's all the directors. Uh, and then like episode two, and I, I forget each order, but like episode two is like special effects. Then episode three is tech. Uh, and then four is like score. So each hour episode dives into something, you know, it, it dives in, in depth for an hour of a different part of the production process of making The Mandalorian. Um, the actors, it talks to all the actors. As where well, we find out there's three actors that play The Mandalorian. So yeah, I was really, there you go. And I want to quantify the fact that when you talk about the tech, you talk about the thing, even if this is not necessarily what you would think would be your thing, 
give it a shot because this is incredible stuff that you really kind of they do it very well it's produced very well we kind of sit back and go oh there oh, is some of it's, yeah this is so educational i'm a huge film buff i love the idea of making movies i get but in even if the you were it's the point it, i'm right, trying to even make if yes. you're not but what i'm saying is is like even those that are involved there's so much to learn even if you think you know because they are they're breaking so much ground on this series it's um they've developed uh, it's amazing to watch. Don't, don't, yeah, they, don't, they've developed this whole dome. Uh, this has all been out already that they've filmed in front of a digital screen. So unlike the, the high production cost that we have here of a green screen, Mandalorian has actually, they, they've, they've basically changed the way that TV is going to be filmed, that they've developed this uh, dome. Maybe even, not only TV. I mean, we've, oh, we're, the way, way film has done, it, yes. you know. When you're watching the series, the, the background that, that you see is actually what they see. Like, they're in this dome where it's ceiling, walls, everything is basically showing whatever landscape it is that they're at. And they Which can see and Which is incredible. Think about that from, I think that gives a big quantification to the, the the actors it yes. lets them act you know if you go back you look at the prequels there was a lot of complaints especially with episode one that the actors were basically working in front of a green screen and we yes. talk about Liam Neeson and, the, really and the additional millions that yeah. it cost to because add, of like, his height six yes. inches but this is completely different Yes. Yeah, no, yeah. this, honestly, it, and Kara Weathers, who, who's amazing in The Mandalorian, actually alludes to that, where he says, you know, they, they, they specifically highlight the tunnel scene when they're going down, like, the lava tunnel, and he's like, you could literally look straight ahead and see the light at the end of the tunnel coming towards you, turn around and see the light at the other end of the tunnel going away, and he makes a great reference that when something exploded and something happened in front of them, they all reacted, they all saw the same thing and all could react to visioning the, the same thing. To whereas when you think about it on a green screen, everybody's imagination is kind of figuring, you know, the, you know it's an explosion, but Absolutely. each person has kind of their own idea of what that explosion will look like. So the reactions aren't always the same. You know, and that little bit of detail, I think, really showed when watching The Mandalorian. Absolutely. It gives you that opportunity to be surprised as a group. And, you know, as a director, it takes a huge load off of you to focus on the finer detail yes. because you have that background already there. Everything from the way the camera programs to, to look at the backdrop. When sure. The camera and the backdrop are synced, that the background will move with the camera Absolutely. and adjust the, the, the depth mm -hmm. of view or the point of view. It is amazing to watch the series and see the tech that they developed. Um, and what's even better about this is the roundtable discussions. I have said this from day one. The chosen one for Star Wars is Dave Filoni. And you can tell by every director, um, every actor, when Dave Filoni speaks about Star Wars, the, you can hear a pin yes, drop. Yeah. I mean, they just drop. He gives, an, at the end of episode two, he gives an explanation of what he, how he views the prequels. And a lot of people dismiss the prequels. Uh, he talks for about 10 minutes, I think. It, it blew me away, though. It does, and though. You, and it, you, it, yes. You can watch every director's reaction on that table, that they are all learning, that they are all looking at, at this guy, and they are all taking it in. And it's just his perception of those prequels I don't want to give any spoilers of how he views them because I want you to watch it and hear the words Incredibly come out of his important. mouth. Incredibly important, right. This guy gets it. He is the protege of George Lucas. He should be to Star Wars to what Kevin Feige is to I, Marvel. You know, I almost I, feel like that's happening. I, I think so, and you can you can see it. I, I love the dynamic between John Favreau and Dave Filoni. I was really curious at the... like. I, you know, when they announced John Favreau was heading the series, that I loved, excited me. I, see, I, I was a little put off. I love Favreau and I loved him being involved, but I was also to the, like, why isn't Filoni in charge? When but you watch was, the dynamic, right? you get it yes. because Filoni has only been experienced in animation, and, right? And we've we've had this discussion, Rob and I have, and you know, you can see that Dave Filoni, like, we, him, he makes the argument that he should be running all Star Wars. All Star Wars. However, I see he is a artist, he is a creator, and I think that would take away from Filoni if, and he's made reference to that in the past in other interviews, where yeah. like, I don't, basically he's like, I don't want that job, I want to tell stories. He, I, he wants Does that make it, sense? he just doesn't know it yet. He, I don't think he should Filoni, direct. do me a favor, call <laughs> Rob, he'll set you straight. I got you covered. Yes, he's but got you covered. I, I don't think he should direct or write every episode, but I do think everything should pass through him. Is, is my point. Oh, so he I, should be like the keeper of the key. The Kevin he Feige. Should, the key. Kevin Which Feige doesn't direct every Marvel like, this movie. This is my story, though. Yes. But Kevin Feige this tells isn't the, the way entire story done. through others. Yeah, but he, he guides it. You mm. know, and, and they, they make a reference here. All I'm going to say um, is, uh, is Doctor Strange in, in the Universe of Madness. That was a very definite, like, you're not going to tell my story yes. later, dude. But, but 
Gina Monster, Carino yes. gives a, a great uh, a great point where she's like, you can go to Dave Filoni and say, does even the shoulder pad work? And he would correct that of, well, See, no, not God, technically because it that. should be more this design. That's and beautiful. they would change yep. it. Yep. He is that into this universe because George Lucas taught him from the mm -hmm. beginning uh, that I do think they should pass through. Yes. When you talk about him, like, he's a fan. He's so he is, passionate. Yes. He, when he speaks, everyone just quiets down. But I love watching the dynamic. This really opened my eyes to see the dynamic between Favreau and Filoni. Because if you don't know the history, Filoni ran the Clone Wars. He brought John Favreau into the Star Wars realm mm -hmm. by having him voice pre Vizsla um, and getting him some character voiceover. So I do think like John Favreau understands that Filoni's the I guy who should I, be in charge, and he's teaching him two, live action. You've got two fans. Yes. Like you have two big but Star Filoni, Wars fans. Uh, but I would say Favreau understands he needs to teach Filoni how sure. to deal with yes. actors, how yeah. to do live action. And then it's interesting because, like, you know, again, they go about the tech. They've redefined, like, they don't do storyboards. They do what's called pre -vis, and they go to Filoni a lot for that, where they animate all the scenes Which before they he's film it, and it's yes. so much easier for the directors. So it's interesting because they're both bouncing ideas mm -hmm. off each other, and they're creating this whole way of filmmaking. But it, it's, it's, it's interesting watching the two of them talk. If there's anything you're going to take out of this series, I highly recommend watching it just for the idea of get the feeling of what Dave Filoni brings to the series and brings to the Star Wars universe. Sure, I, I'd absolutely. love to hear feedback. If you guys yeah. think I'm wrong and he shouldn't be running it, let me know. But I tell you what, this series, it basically ends the last five minutes of every episode with him wrapping it up. That and it's just wonderful. And when he absolutely. talks, yes. it's just silent. It's amazing. And everything makes sense when he speaks. But I will say Dave Filoni for Star Wars president. There I, we go. <laughs> <laughs> Dave Filoni for president. Yes. God, you can't Got my get vote. any worse than it is right now, right? <laughs> So uh, definitely, I will say, if you have Disney+, Plus, there's not a lot of new content. This is it. Then yeah. you can cancel after you, you're done with this. You yes. might have passed over. Because like I said, the thumbnail absolutely and the title don't have. tell you no, what it absolutely. is. Absolutely. Yeah. Give, it, give it a look and let us know if you did pass over. I'd love to hear if you have. And, and if you discover it because of us, let us know what you think of it. I, yeah. I'd be really interested in your thoughts. So with that. Oh. You, know gonna, what, you know what I miss? What do you miss, Jeff? I miss my MTV. Me too. <laughs> All right. Hey, Dan, you know what? Hey, Dan, I'm so excited. You know what I get to do? Uh, I changed my mind. I'm oh, this week. God. No, I'm kidding. Yeah. I'm excited because this is I Miss My TV, and I'm done. Jeff, <laughs> you take it from here. Hi, everybody. I actually get to pick a song for once. <laughs> no, seriously. Tonight, we're going to cover a band called Moon Hooch. It's an American band from Brooklyn, New York, uh, known for kind of like a, it's kind of a dance-oriented percussion, saxophone-based music. Um, I'm going to actually give you an opportunity to take a listen to it. It's a lot of fun. It's yeah. really, it's just fun music. So... In the end, here it is. What's the name of the song? Uh, <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> That was kind of dancey. That was kind of dancey. Yeah. yeah. No. And uh, they're all shirtless. Yeah, it must be hot in that van. It must be. God, wow. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, uh, hey, check out more Moon Hooch. Is there other tracks by them, no, Jeff? Multiple Moon, Hooch, it, it, multiple Moon Hooch. When you get a chance, go ahead on YouTube and take a look at them. Absolutely. Yeah. Link is below to that track. Then you can follow it from there. After you click like. And subscribe. And that bell, because you're going to know when we make you new guys, episodes. You guys, that bell is so important. It is. Jeff hasn't eaten months, so please <laughs> click it. <laughs> Why do you think I have a bed here? <laughs> All right, thank you for watching. We appreciate it. Stay tuned. We're bringing you more fun. Make sure you leave comments below. We'd like to hear from you. If you got movie trailers or TV shows. Anything you want to share with us that we can get up on here, yeah. please. You want to know sure. our opinion on it? Absolutely. It's yeah. what really matters. Then share it, and we'll let you know. So thank you for watching. As always, I'm Robbie. And I'm Jay Marsh. And this is... A Attack on show.